Hello friends, welcome to all. In our course, Geographical Thoughts, the first chapter is Historical Development of Geographical Thought. In that, the first topic is a brief account of Greek school of thoughts. So today, we'll see the contribution of some Greek scholars in the development of geographical thoughts. In the last session, we have dealt with the syllabus of our course Geographical Thoughts and in today's session, we will see a brief account of Greek school of thoughts. Friends, you know that there are many scholars, mathematicians, philosophers, travelers and traders as well as rulers who has given their valuable contribution in the development of geographical thought. So let us see what is the contribution of some of the important Greek scholars in the development of geographical thought. Now, in this topic, first of all, we will see what is the contribution of Greek scholars. Then, what are the important characteristics of the Greeks which are favorable for the development of different branches of knowledge in the Greek. Then, also we will see what important contribution has been given by different German, uh, Greek scholars that is Homer, Thales, Anaximander, Hecatius, Herodotus, Alexander the Great, Eratosthenes, Hipparchus and Posidonius. As well as in this topic we will also see that what is the contribution of all these Greek scholars in mathematical and physical geography. So first of all we will see the characteristics of the Greeks. Friends, the Greeks were pioneers in many branches of knowledge. Their period is known as the Golden Age of Greece. They borrowed many of the concepts of astronomy, geometry and mathematics from other scholars. Their geographical knowledge in the initial stage was very limited only to the countries and islands near to the Greece. All beyond was vague and indefinite for them and it was based on unreliable reports which were influenced by their mythological and religious beliefs. The characteristics of the Greeks were quite favorable for the development of different branches of knowledge in the Greece. The Greeks possessed philosophical and scientific aptitude and they had inquisitive nature and comprehensiveness of mind. They were great observer of the nature. They observed their surrounding, gathered the information and recorded all this information very systematically. And therefore, they became the pioneer in different branches of the knowledge. Further, the location of Greece is also very favorable for the development of knowledge. The location of Greece was also favorable for the growth of ge geographical knowledge. Greece has hilly and undulating topography. There is diversity in relief features. There are snow covered peaks, several rivers are there. The country is situated on both the sides of Aegean Sea and characterized by coastal plains, highly indented coastline, which is very favorable for the development of harbors and ports. These varied geographical conditions helped and motivated the Greeks to make advancement in the fields of various branches of geography such as 
geomorphology, oceanography, and climatology. Further, the numerous hot springs and volcanoes and frequent tremors of earthquake also force them to give explanation of these phenomena. Greeks were started several Greek colonies, especially around the Mediterranean and Black Sea. It also helped them for observing the varied regions and collected the information, analyzed the information and therefore the geographical knowledge was developed among the Greeks. Greeks established their colonies in different parts of the Mediterranean and Black Sea. In 5th century BC, Miletus became the main center of geographical inquiry. Greeks established the famous library museum at Alexandra. This library became the center of knowledge and gave impetus to scientific study of natural phenomena, places as well as the people. Further, several scholars in Greece and from the neighboring regions also exchanged their views with other scholars, traders as well as navigators. This library museum also inspired Eratosthenes and Hipparchus for scientific observations about the size, shape and circumference of the earth and in this way several aspects of geographical knowledge were developed such as mathematical geography, geometry as well as trade and economics. All this helped in the development of geographical knowledge. Now, we will see the contribution of some of the Greek scholars in the development of geographical knowledge. In that, the first famous name of the Greek scholar is Homer. The period of Homer was in the 8th century BC. Homer was the greatest Greek poet. He was the creator of famous and very classical epic poems named as Iliad and Odyssey. These poems described the episodes of Trojan Wars which was fought between 1280 to 1180 BC, which illustrates the historical geography and then known world. And therefore, the contribution of Homer is very important, especially in the development of historical geography. However, Homer's description about the nature was based on unrealistic and mythological fancies. Homer believed that the earth shape is circular, surrounded by ocean river from all sides. He believed that the sky is concave and solid dome, resting on the tall pillars and have same extent that of the earth. According to Homer, the sun rises from the ocean to the east and sets again at the same point. Of course, this was very erroneous concept. According to him, the stars also follow the same course in the sky and bathing every day in the ocean water. He has also given some descriptions about the winds. According to him, there are four types of winds coming from four directions. The strong and cool wind coming from the north, 
is known as bores bores is characterized characterized by clear skies the warm and gentle eastern wind is called as eurus notus is the southern wind which was characterized by rain and storm and sometimes becomes violent according to homer the wind coming from the west was the wind which is sometimes become strong up to homer's period the terms europe and asia were not known but later the eastern shore of the aegean sea was known as asia and the western shore was termed as europe after that we we'll see the contribution of another greek scholar named as thales thales is popularly known as thales of miletus his period was from 624 to 545 bc he was the first greek thinker philosopher and traveler who gave many theorems of ge- geometry he was the first person who started measurement of the earth surface and also tried to decided the locations of the things on the earth surface thales was great observer and practical businessman he solved many problems of geometry and trigonometry and in this way he has given his contribution in the development of mathematical geography he also studied cosmology and also gave reliable predictions of solar eclipses however his idea about the earth was false he also considered that the earth as a flat disk floating in the water then the another important greek scholar who has given a great contribution in the development of geography is anaximander the period of anaximander was 610 to 546 bc anaximander was a disciple of thales he was a student of the of thales he is known for his excellent work of preparing the then known world map which was very close to the scale in this map greece has been shown in the center of the world the shape of the map was circular and it was surrounded by ocean river from all sides thales developed an instrument known as nomon this nomon has played very important role in the development of uh, mathematical geography and for measuring the distances as well as to find out the or to decide the latitudes longitudes as well as it also help to decide the time of the day so anaximander developed an instrument which is known as nomon nomon is a pole standing vertically on the earth surface by this instrument the varying positions of the sun could be measured by observing the length and the direction of the shadow cast by nomon it was also helped to decide the directions anaximander thales and thales are generally recognized 
as the founders of mathematical geography. After that, we have to see the work and contribution of another Greek scholar named as Hecatius. The period of Hecatius was between 550 to 476 BC. Hecatius was a great statesman and pioneer geographer. He was the first writer of Greek prose. In his famous book, Jes Peridos, which was published probably in the 6th century BC, he has given a systematic description of the then known world. In this book, he has given a detailed account of the Mediterranean Sea, various islands in the sea, inlets and also described the general outline of all known countries of the world. He also gave a general survey of the world which describes the places close to the Mediterranean Sea. This work in Greek language is known as Periplus which means coastal survey. His work is compiled into two books. The first book contains geographical information of the Europe and the second book contains geographical description of Libya that is Africa as well as Asia. Hecatius also believed the concepts given by an examiner about the shape of the earth that he also considered the earth shape as a circular plane with Greece in the center. Of course, his concept was erroneous. According to Hecatius, the landmass of the earth can be divided into two equal parts, the continent of Europe to the north and Libya that is combined Africa and Asia to be to the south. He also describes geography of India, especially he has given the description of Indus Valley in his writing. So friends, this is the contribution given by some of the major Greek scholars in the development of various branches of geography, especially in the mathematical geography, physical geography, oceanography and climatology. Besides these Greek scholars, there are some very important Greek scholars named as Herodotus as well as Alexander the Great, Eratosthenes, Hipparchus and Posidonius. So we will see the contribution given by these great Greek scholars in the next session.